What's going on, creative family? It's Dustin Valkama, and welcome back to another subscriber critique. Today, we're taking a look at an Are You Human fan art piece by Ernesto Rodriguez. Um, Instagram link is down in the description. I love his work, so it's really cool for me to get in here and uh, nitpick one of his pieces. You can see here that there's all kinds of marks and whatnot. I actually went through the process of marking this up prior to recording this video to hopefully cut down on some of the time. So I'm looking forward to this one, guys. I actually like this piece more than the original poster, and I'll explain why. I will see you in Photoshop. All right, guys, so here we are in Photoshop. Um, I've got Ernesto's piece here on the right side and the poster on the left side. And I really actually like this quite a bit on Ernesto's end. Um, just the type of creative I am, I enjoy having more color here um, in the overall image rather than just a white background. Uh, I can understand why they went and took that approach, but for me, this is kind of more my style, a little bit darker, uh, moodier, and so on. So what I've done here is created a markup and it looks a lot worse than it really is. Um, but there are a couple things here that I'd really like to address. And so we can dive right into this. So the first thing that stuck out to me here uh, really had to do more with the crop of this image versus the poster. And I really do like to have more of a maybe a four to three aspect ratio uh, for things like posters. And th this might have been something that you did, Ernesto, for Instagram and whatnot. But personally, what I like to do is make this work in a four to three ratio, and then you can use one of the fancy apps, um, you know, just to create like an Insta square for it and, you know, make sure that the whole thing is shown. If this was a little bit more for an album cover, that's OK. Um, I might just have adjusted things here a little bit differently, uh, but we'll get into that. And the next thing that I really think I would have addressed here really has to do with the font that was chosen and i feel that this is just drawing a little bit too much attention just due to the varying the varying thickness of the font um you see that in the poster here it's a little bit more uniform in thickness and that's something that i would kind of watch out for and maybe drop the opacity just a little bit um in the original i do like the way that this you know, font or the copy here just kind of is slightly hidden away in the design of the poster. And I think that's something that yours would benefit from because right now it just looks a little bit, um, you know, cluttered or busy when it could just be played a little bit more subtly. So the next thing I want to point out here, if I turn on my markup, um, really has to do with some of the distractions that are happening here in the image. And for me, it's primarily in in these uh, the holographic um, elements that you have here i feel like these ones could have been masked out a little bit better um, i'm not sure exactly what was going on there um, it looks like it might have just been an overlay that you may have scaled up uh, to try to work for this but that's something that i would typically you know maybe either try to recreate yourself which can be very time consuming um, or maybe just find some vector uh, overlays or you know, like an illustrator file you can pull from. I'm sure there's some out there. So the next thing I want to point out here, um, if I turn on my markup, really has to do with, say, removing the boogers. All right, so for me, boogers really have to do more with just small artifacts or distracting elements that are in a scene. And in this one specifically, it's coming from, you know, I'm assuming what is some of the HUD elements and overlays that you have um, laid out here. and there's quite a few, so it's it's something that you can kind of see in the markup. I went through and tried to mark up as many that are really distracting as possible. Um, but just to save time here, I won't go through and, and actually try to paint those out. Um, for anybody watching this, I know that Ernesto didn't really have a chance to send the PSD for this one. Uh, but if you guys can send me like a layered Photoshop file, that would be great if you want really more of a detailed critique uh, so that I can really demo some of this stuff a bit easier and maybe just use a layer mask to erase certain things rather than painting them out. So what I'm seeing here, Ernesto, is that, you know, you're getting certain elements that are kind of happening here over the face and over key points in in your characters. 
And that's really just stuff that's covering the eyes there. Uh, you can see in the hair here that there's, you know, little elements that look like particles, um, you know, little things like this that are just, you know, bright and sort of distracting. And you, typically you just want to take a look and make sure that you're moving that stuff proactively. And it, it helps a lot, you know, often before you get to the end of a piece like this and you're like, oh, crap, I got some stuff in there. Um, I've done things like that before, and it's it's really one of those things I've I've had a few people actually point that stuff out to me. So I just want to make sure that you're aware of that. Um, a little bit of cleanup can go a long way. Now, the next distraction for me is with this double exposure effect here on the bottom, uh, where you're overlaying another scene. I feel that what they did do in in the reference image here is they desaturated that. And in a piece like this, that would really help because it's not going to draw the eye or any extra attention. It's really just more of an added element, um, you know, kind of to keep the keep the eye looking for, you know, secondary details and things like that that are going on here in the in your image. So what we can do here is just grab a hue and saturation adjustment layer, drop a saturation on that. Uh, press Control or Command I to invert the layer mask, and we can paint with a white brush just to get rid of some of the saturation down here in these elements. And you can see right away that that really, you know, kind of helps place a little bit more focus up here towards your subjects because it's not distracting with a bright and contrasting, um, you know, green or cyan hue down here on the bottom. Um, and what I might do is actually find or extend um, this double exposure effect kind of across the whole bottom. Uh, you can sort of see that here a little bit more in the poster where it kind of covers a little bit more of, you know, the, the horizontal length of that. So that might be something to think about. Um, one thing that I did see here that I, I also might adjust is just pulling a little bit more focus up towards the faces um, of your subject here. And I might do that by grabbing, say, a gradient adjustment layer. Um, and can I actually like this, uh, this green blue color here. So we can just drop that down a little bit. Click OK, bring the scale down just a tad. Kind of put that, put that down towards the bottom there and set it to a multiply blend mode. And what you'll see that do there is just bring a little bit more, a um, little bit more emphasis, you know, just on the faces there. And I think that helps a lot. On with the nitpicky markup here, uh, what I'll do is just create a new layer here on top so that we can mark off what we are taking care of. I'll just say green color. All right, so we've addressed the boogers. We've addressed the font. Desaturated scene, larger, gradient to pull focus, um, aspect ratio. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna talk about here has to do with um, the shadow colors here on the subject. I feel that in a scene like this, that's a little bit more um, of a blue green ambient would actually cast some of that color here in the shadows. And I think that that's something that we can add, which might add a little bit more value to that. So in order to do that fairly quickly, uh, what we can do is head down to our adjustments and add a gradient map adjustment layer. Now I'll typically just turn this layer off so that I can select colors from the background quite easily. So we will grab uh, this darker color here in the A. We can select, we'll say the highlights. Um, we'll just select from her nose there. And for the midtones, we can select the, yeah, the background color, that works. So when we turn on this adjustment layer now um, for the gradient map there, what we can do is head back into the gradient and then if you drag these color handles here around, you can see that how we're essentially adjusting the threshold of where those colors will sit. 
And so for this one, I don't think we really need to push it too far. But we can set right about there, uh, click OK for that, and then say set this to a color uh, blend mode. And then you can drop the opacity just a little bit. And then if you double click to get into, into your blend if options here, um, we can just use this underlying layer here uh, for blend if, and that will just essentially read everything that's underneath this layer. And so we can just bring down these highlights some if you wanna keep the skin tones intact. Uh, it just really depends on the look that you're specifically going for. But right here, we're primarily trying to get a, you know, get a grip on the shadows. And so we'll just pull that over and click OK. And so now you can see that, you know, here in the shadows now um, is an overall, you know, color cast. We're getting a little bit more of that blue green hue to it. And so we can head back. Let's go back into the blend if here a moment. Um, we can even bring that down just a little bit further away from the highlights and the midtones. And now you can see that that's primarily just taking effect in the shadows. So let's go into the markup and make sure that we take care of some of this here so that we see where we're at. Now, you can see here that I, I marked off fringing, Ernesto. So I saw in your email that you were having trouble with the fringing. Um, what I'd actually like to do just to make that uh, sort of a one-off video is I will handle that in a fix it in post video here and I will look to upload upload that here shortly after this one um, so that you can see exactly how I did that and I think that might bring some value to everybody else that's uh, watching this or you know say may not want to watch this entire video to find that piece um, but I think that that's something that will really help more people out than not. So we'll address that in a separate video. All right, so the two things that I wanna talk about next are actually a little bit more of a personal preference. Um, and that's something that I'm not really, I don't think that we really need a demo here, but it would just be adding a little bit more contrast or a pop to her sweater. And when I say pop, it's not necessarily popping her sweater, but allowing, um, a breakup there of value between the hair and the sweater and her skin tones um, because it's a very neutral image and I feel that you know just adding something down there that's maybe a little bit darker and contrasting uh, without taking away um, too much attention you know from the face of your subject here uh, might be a good idea and the next thing let's mark that off here just so that we discuss that uh, the next thing that I really thought might help would be having some separation here between the front her and the back her. <laughs> so you can see in the reference um, on this side that there's really a good contrast separation here um, from, you know, just between the, the darks and the shadow on the right side of the subject's face and then the bright you know, high key image on the back. Um, so what I think we could do on your side is maybe just add, you know, say a slight gradient. Um, this is something that we can do here, uh, hopefully fairly quickly, because you do have some separation going on already. But once you get down, you know, say into her locks here, um, really on both sides of this image, they kind of mesh together quite a bit. And I really like the way that you have yours graded and um, the way that the lighting is here quite a bit. So what I might do is we'll just paint this in here quickly. Um, we'll grab this lighter color here from the background. And if we were to go through and just maybe paint kind of going up. This is something that obviously you would want to have done, um, you know, right in between these two uh, foreground and background layers. Uh, we can create a layer mask with that. I'll turn that off there a moment. And we can just create a very quick mask here around the hair and just paint that out. And 
And so all you'd be looking to do here um, would just, you know, is essentially just making sure that you have some separation that's, you know, that's happening between these two. Um, because it does it does get quite distracting. Uh, just overall, your eye isn't really quite sure where to look. And, you know, say we drop the opacity of this layer here um, and then maybe, you know, add this onto the other side. Let's create that. Let's see here with a multiply. We can bring the opacity up a little bit. But either way here, you can see, you know, just how that adds some some instant separation between your foreground and your background subject. Um, whether you do that, you know, a little bit lighter, uh, what you could do is possibly just drop the opacity on your the, the subject there in the background and kind of force that to lighten up a little bit similar to what they have in the reference. Um, or you could make it darker and kind of continue on with a little bit more of a, the dark low key theme that you have going on here. I think either way is fine, but just making sure that you have some good separation there would really help a lot. All right, now we're down to the last two things here that I wanted to point out, and that primarily has to do with um, the first thing is adding some kind of a light source here to the pupils. You can see in the reference here on the left side that there, you know, is some some type of illumination coming from the pupils that really kind of help make sense of having cut elements there in front. And what we'll do is turn off the markup and we can just paint uh, these in on a normal layer. Uh, normally for something like this, I would probably just, you know, use like a quick lens flare so that you have some of the color breakup. Um, I really don't like to work with painted layers like this because uh, when you're getting into more in-depth composites, it can get tough to know what layers are what unless you're naming them all the time. And that in itself is just taking up time. Sometimes I'm too impatient for that. But what we can do here is grab a brush tool and press Alter Option to sample, say, one of these colors here. Uh, we'll just sample one of the brighter colors. And you can just place a little pop here right inside of her pupil. And you can do that on the other side. Um, you can see that on the reference side, they have a little bit more of a color breakup. So you can just kind of grab, you know, some of the of the color here and kind of splash that in just a little bit. Um, around there to break it up just a little bit more. And then I would really work with more of a true soft brush here and then add just a, a couple pops to really give a little bit more illumination, um, you know, outside to the iris area. And then you can just go through and use whatever blend modes actually work for you. I would say on this one, I'd probably use a linear dodge and then you just bring that down to wherever you need it. And you can see here that that just kind of gives a little bit more of um, a robotic look to that and helps it out some. And the last thing that I wanted to discuss here, which really isn't actually so bad here on the left side, um, but on this right side here, I feel that her face gets just a little bit flat and you can see on her nose here, she has, you know, just this nice highlight that comes there. But in the forehead, uh, it seems to get just a little bit flat. And so what I'll do is just grab a curves. This is really a nitpicky kind of personal preference thing. Um, it's not something that has to be done, you know, for the sake of the image, but just for demo purposes, um, essentially created a curves layer just bumped up the exposure there a little bit um, and then created a negative fill layer mask with a white brush and I'll say 30% opacity um, just to make this quick. I might just go through and add just a little bit more of a highlight and it doesn't really need to be anything drastic there. And then we can just bring the opacity of that down just a little bit. 
So essentially what that's doing is just getting getting just a little bit more um, of a breakup of information there happening. You can take it out of the shadow areas here. And yeah, that's it. So I actually really like this image um, overall. We'll say even before a lot of the, you know, the changes that we made, um, I like the color choices. I I do think that some of the emphasis, you know, um, gets a bit lost here, but with a couple small tweaks and changes, uh, I think that you could really go through and, and make this thing pop. Now, this is something that I would, you know, I wouldn't mind at all posting on social media. Um, you know, and like I said earlier, with a PSD, I could get into a little bit more in depth with, say, being able to do more of a true live demo with this um, and getting much more detail oriented. But as an overall critique, I really like what you have going on here. And so I decided to go in and nitpick a little bit. And I will handle this masking for you, as I said earlier, in another video. All right, guys, that wraps up today's subscriber critique. Thank you, Ernesto, for lending me this image. It was really a blast kind of going through this and being able to nitpick this stuff. Uh, hopefully I wasn't too harsh, but I like to call what I see. Um, make sure that you guys like, comment, subscribe. Enable notifications so you guys can see when I upload new content. Follow Ernesto. His Instagram handle is down below in the description. And I will see you guys in the next video.